welcome to the webinar today everyone thank you so much for joining us and listening to this topic we thought is very relevant going into 2024 how not to lose a good customer i mean we all want to have the best customers on our portfolio list and it really hurts when the one it's like the one that got away right and we want to make sure that the one doesn't get away we worked almost a year with nate and his team over at mariani landscape um, and really really impressed and proud uh, with the solution that they've implemented, learned a lot from it and thought it would be a great learning opportunity for all of us in the industry as, you know, these guys in, in Chicago, you know, have, have really led the way when it comes to quality control. They come to share with us their learnings and uh, how they run their ship when it comes to quality control. Nate, thank you so much for joining, man, and agreeing to do this with us. You're welcome. So as we kick this off, uh, let me just share my screen, go to slideshow. Let's kick off with some uh, intros. Nate, would you like to tell us about what you do at Mariani and you know what Mariani does in the industry? Yeah, so Mariani Landscape uh, has been uh, on the North Shore of Chicago for 66 years. We primarily service uh, residential clients. We offer a, a commercial portfolio as well, uh, but it's still what I would consider high-end um, uh, commercial projects that we work on. So very detail-oriented, very demanding um, type of work uh, that we perform in a very competitive market on top of that. You know, there's a lot of uh, a lot of companies in our area that are really doing a lot of good work too. And so we have to continually try to improve ourselves to be better than them. And that's what uh, we feel helps separate us from that competition. So uh, myself, I've been with Mariani for a little over uh, 10 years. I went to University of Illinois for landscape architecture, moved up to the North Shore shortly after graduating. I started with Rocco Fiori and Sons uh, right out of college, then came to Mariani a few years after that. Uh, we've recently actually merged together. So uh, we're all, uh, Rocco Fiori and Mariani are together now. And we've grown a lot over the last few years. And um, I guess we needed some tools to be able to help us monitor and control and give consistency to the product that we were delivering to our clients. And so what we're going to talk about today are, are some of those things that we are developing and have been developing in order to be able to do that. Very cool. Thank you for that introduction, Nate. Guys, a few ice housekeeping items before we dive right into it. We have two ways to interact here. One is the chat button. You will see that in your toolbar. The other button is the Q&A button. Q&A button, you ask questions. We'll pick them up. We'll stop the discussion. We'll pick them up so that we can get into the depth of it. Chat is just to drop comments. And then we'll do two poll questions. So as to get a sense of, you know, the quality challenges that you face and, uh, or the challenges you face when you implement a quality process and the retention numbers that you are, you, you have right now and where you could go with that. Uh, so two poll questions. And it's a hard stop for Nate in about an hour from now. So we'll leave his email at the end if we are left with any questions, but keep sending them our way so that we can take them up as we go along. So the way we are structuring this is we want to know why Mariani maintains insanely high quality standards. That's the first thing we'll talk about. We'll talk about a history of continuous improve, improvement, I'm sorry, in quality control at Mariani Landscape. I mean, they end up with the best process in the country. It's it's improved over the, over the years. And what are the stages they have gone through? We want to talk about that. Uh, we'll get into the details of that infrastructure that they have set up that will include technology, culture, processes, the KPIs they have set for their people. And then we'll get into a live demo of how this thing operates in the field. So my colleague, Tyler, out in the Indianapolis market, he'll be on a property showing you how this assessment is actually done in the field. And I'll show you how that streams onto a dashboard. And this, you know, this dashboard essentially helps with driving quality at the leadership level. Then we'll talk about the ROI that you can get from a solution, implementing a solution like this, and why it's kind of important to roll this out as soon as possible. Post that, we'll get into Q&A and uh, the next steps that you expect to go through if this implementation is a priority for you. Is there anything else you would like to cover on top of this? I think that, that covers most of it. All right, sweet. I mean, I've been to some of your properties, man. It's like the lords and ladies from 18th century England, they're living there and they can nitpick. They have all the time to nitpick. And for some reason, you have a retention rate over 90%. It's absurd to me. And like, so what? 
Why do you have, like, how do you even do it? Well, it's a lot of work. Uh, I'll start by saying that it, it's not done easily. And I think, uh, you know, anybody who's been in this industry can can attest, uh, you know, how difficult it is. When you come to the North Shore of Chicago, though, uh, I, I say it's the most scrutinized landscape maintenance in the world. It goes back to my earlier comment about the, the competition and the expectation that our clients have. And um, if we don't meet their expectations, they're going to find somebody else to do it. So in order to maintain that uh, retention rate, uh, we've got to work extremely hard and we need to be smart about how we do it. Um, you know, we have nearly 1800 maintenance accounts uh, that we service on a weekly basis. Uh, that's a lot of crews. That's a lot of people touching those sites. It's a lot of account managers, client reps in order to sort of uh, from my perspective, maintain uh, the visibility to seeing, I, I can't go see all those properties, you know, myself in, in a week or a month, uh, nor can my territory vice presidents um, or the directors of production for those territories. So this gives us, um, the two, this tool gives us a little bit of a visibility into how our crews are performing from client to client, from territory to territory, and allows us just a glimpse in that. And from that data, we can then pinpoint where we might have a potential problem with a crew leader that needs additional training. Uh, we have might potentially have a problem with how the client rep is grading the site. Through that data, we can narrow the, that focus down and, and give some attention to those specific areas to help improve ultimately the experience that the client receives. Very cool. Did you have that set out as a company culture policy DNA thing right from the start? Like we'll we'll drive quality. That's going to be our thing. I've only been here for 10 years. Like, you know, Mariani's commitment to quality and excellence started well before I ever got here. Um, obviously, it started with Frank Mariani and Frank Mariani's dad. And um, all the people that have worked at this company over the last 66 years, uh, I, I'm just picking up the torch and running with it. Um, and luckily, they, they had built a company and a culture that was built around that before I even got here. Uh, so for me to take it and run with it uh, in that regard has been easy because People come to Mariani either as an associate or a client because they're looking for the best. And um, that reputation preceded me. Very cool. And so over the 10 years you've been in the system, what changes have you seen in this quality control process? When we first implemented this back in, I think, 2019, uh, through a homemade sort of rinky-dink program that we had made ourselves, we started to see, first of all, it was difficult to get everybody to sort of buy into it, like anything new uh, and, and anything different and change. Uh, sometimes there's a little resistance, um, but I think everybody started to understand the benefit that was going to come out of this. And, and the one thing that we wanted to do was make sure that it, it really tied our sales team with our production team. Um, and it was a, meant to reward uh, our crew leaders at the end of the day for um, doing a really good job. And I actually saw this from a, a there was a company that we toured uh, here in the Chicago market a few years, it would have been the beginning of 2019, Very, a much smaller company. But what I really liked about what they were doing was the fact that they were incentivizing every position in the company down to the crew member, actually, if they showed up on time and they performed at a high level. And I thought it would be awesome if we could do that at a much larger scale. And that's where the CPR, crew performance ranking, sort of was, was born. And and then Site Recon, you've obviously helped build that tool in a more, I would say, professional manner on a platform that is going to allow us to take it to the next level, um, which we'll probably touch base on later today. Very cool. Um, do you, when you think about rewards, what, what kind of rewards are we talking about here? So we run, we're grading our sites uh, all year, actually, uh, but we really start to incentivize the crew leader based on the scores that they receive on a monthly basis. So uh, at the end of the May is the first month that we actually start that reward process. Um, at the end of the month of May, we add up all the grades uh, from all of the maintenance properties. And if that crew leader on all the properties that they're responsible for grades highly enough, they'll get a, a little bonus that month. 
Um, and then it'll go on month after month after month until the end of the season. And then the last month, October, um, for our, our maintenance calendar, they get the, that reward is a little bigger, again, to finish the year kind of on a strong note. And to me, it was always a challenge to get the client reps to, to do this. And uh, it was sort of like pulling teeth initially. But I, I, my thought was, if we're doing this in a way to recognize our crew leaders and reward them, how could you not want to do it? And I think through that mentality, everybody started to buy in on it and and really start to participate and, and do these assessments uh, on a regular basis, uh, mandatory basis. And um, it's a reflection on, on the crew's performance and we want to celebrate that. And when there's a mistake or the grades are lower, that's an opportunity to grab that crew leader take them out on a site, work with them, train them, and and up their game until they can score at a high level and receive those bonuses. Very cool. On that point of challenges of implementing a solution like that, I want to launch a poll here to everyone who's here. What's the biggest challenge you face in maintaining high quality standards? Is it like too many sites to monitor? No way to quantify quality? No way to make sure a process is followed? I think Nate... You mentioned a few of these things right off the bat, like just having the large number of sites as a leader, you can't be there to see all of it. And just like making sure people follow it, it's a huge, huge challenge. And as people are submitting their answers, I'll just publish the result in a minute. I want to keep talking about this question you raised or this point you raised of, you know, training the guys. I remember you said something about a handbook you have, like a quality handbook that everybody gets trained on. Is it... Can you tell us more about what goes into it? Well, part of the challenge is if you when you have as as many client reps as as we do to manage all those properties, uh, your consistency with the grader becomes a challenge. And so the the points and I know we're going to see a demo coming up here on what we grade, uh, turf quality, bed maintenance, pruning, ho housekeeping, etc. Uh, there has to be a standard to each one of those categories to which you grade. Is it above that standard? Is it below it? What is that standard? And so the first step is really educating our client reps on, you know, what is the expectation from Mariani, the company? What do we expect our properties to look like? That's step one. Step two is to obviously make sure the crew leaders understand what the expectation is. And then if everything is clicking the right way, we should see really good scores. Um, now we do an audit on top of this where manager level folks go out, we'll look at a score that a client rep gave and we'll look at the property and we say, does this make sense? Um, I think it's important to do that kind of auditing to ensure that the we're grading the graders basically at that point. Um, but I think those are the two big challenges is just making sure that there is a set sort of documented standard of what we expect. Your lines are straight. The grass is this certain color. Um, the bed edges have, you know, the right depth and are, are, are appeasing to the eye, so to speak. Um, and we've got, um, we've got a, a, a black book, as we call it, that have those set standards. And then we reduced it down that if you're grading a site and you're maybe a newer client rep and you're not exactly sure what the standard is for uh, pruning, you can go on there and it'll give you, it'll pop up and just give you a quick idea of, of what we're looking for in case you're not sure. But we do a lot of education and training internally to help explain to everybody what we're expecting uh, from a company perspective. So the poll is in too many sites to monitor appears to be winning the race, no way to quantify quality and no way to make sure process is followed pretty much what we just discussed. Good points there, man, about how you set that process up. Very, very interesting. I think we, when I was thinking about a process and putting this together in a slide, so guys, sorry, backing up for a second. We just went through the mindset, right? The mindset you have in the company as general to drive quality. It's like a thing for you. You've gone out and documented it as a process that people can follow and learn from and implement as a standard across like 60, 70 guys you have out in the field creating properties. And then you layer that on top of it, a technology that helps you drive that. And from, from our standpoint, when we looked at this, this process, this infrastructure, this first thing we thought was, this assessment form that you set up, you decide which questions to add. And every company has their own policy on what will be the points that we want to focus on, given our market, the kind of contract we serve. And then obviously people go out onto the site, do the documentation, creating different quality or different quality that they see on site for different services. 
and then streaming that data up to a dashboard for a branch manager to begin with. Of course, for an account manager to begin with, to look at his 40, 50 properties, and then for the branch manager to look at hundreds of properties for all the guys that work then further up the hierarchy. And then you had this very interesting piece where you would come up with red flags if the quality goes down a standard. It's like, oh, why did that happen? So it escalates up the hierarchy. And then finally, I think over time, you drive better training, better understanding of what the client needs through a system like this across your organization. So breaking this up, when you thought about setting up your assessment forms, you thought about some very specific questions like turf quality. So you were looking at bed detail, seasonal flowers, housekeeping items, and you picked up those six, seven questions. Do you, do you feel like that sufficiently captures what you drive as quality or there's more to it? I think it captures the general essence of what we're trying to accomplish. There's certainly other things that lead to uh, quality and, and uh, the proper client experience, but these are the core things on, you know, again, we always think, okay, uh, maintenance, uh, by the way, I was a client rep at this company, so I've gone through it. I was always more interested in selling enhancements than I really was uh, regarding maintenance, but maintenance is a means to the enhancement sales. You cannot make enhancement sales unless you have maintenance quality. So quality and maintenance is critical in order to get to that further enhancement sale. And so, again, this is just meant to, to try to force that mentality that we are taking this extremely seriously. We are going to look at these core things, but there's much more that goes into that experience at the end of the day. This is just a snapshot uh, and a launching pad to hopefully create all these other opportunities and experiences. Uh, so I do think it's sufficient enough, but there's a lot more that goes into it beyond just this. Got you. And so your point is don't pull your hair over like all the things to put in there, capture the essentials and move on, get the process going. Correct. Um, you did a change between like saying, let's say you want to rate turf quality three on five, sorry, a rating system out of five to a rating system out of four. And uh, was that because like out of five becomes like too fine grained for people to like see what's the difference between three and three and four? We've actually kicked around the tires of going to like a 10 point scale, but we've We've talked to some people outside of the industry that are, you know, better at analytics than than I am. And um, at the end of the day, uh, we wanted to come to a four point scale. Uh, it's either it's either uh, above standard, at standard, below standard, or it's in desperate need of attention. Um, and so the four point scale from you know some of the some of the feedback that we've gotten, again, from some of these other folks outside the industry are, you know, a four point scale will kind of really tell you more about what you're looking for and a little less uh, gray area, so to speak, in between what, what we're trying to accomplish and, and what we're not. So at some point, I, I would like to try a, a five or a 10 point scale just to see what it's like. But for consistency on tracking that quality year over year, we started with a four point scale and the benefits of having that consistent data to me was let's keep it for there, there for now. And um, so far, it seems to be working um, pretty well for us. Very cool. And so, guys, like you can pick your own questions. There's a bunch you can like look at. I just opened that up on the screen. But having the basics right, even the four point scale is just great to kick off. How frequently are you training your account managers to make sure they are actually documenting what you need them to on site? Oh, well, I track this pretty uh, religiously to ensure that, uh, again, people are are filling these out. I know one thing that we're really trying to work on, and we have a bit of a cell issue right against Lake Michigan here. We In, in some of the communities that we work, you simply cannot get cell phone service. But one thing that we're trying to work with you guys, as you know, is to um, have this like sort of geotagged so that we really want the, the client rep to grade the site while they're at the property. And so that's one thing that we're hopefully going to be able to have in the near future. Uh, but we do track this. I mean, every month I'm looking at completion rate um, and you can't do it at the end of the month. You have to do it uh, day by day, week after week in order to get all of your sites graded month after month. It's just a it's a constant sort of drumbeat. Um, and so we look at that and people that are falling behind mid month, uh, we nudge them on the shoulder and say, you, you got to get your, your, your site assessments, CPRs uh, completed. And so uh, it's just a management thing. Again, having the dashboard and the ability to see all that uh, makes my life easier. And then it's a pretty easy conversation, but it's something that I look at every single week. So nature brought up dashboards right on point. We're talking about, we want to talk a bit about KPIs. So how many properties on an average are you expecting your account managers to visit every month or 
just like let's back up how many properties is an account manager managing on an average on average it's around 40 uh, but that fluctuates pretty significantly from the top end to the low end as a client rep when i first got to mariani i was down in the city i had a lot of clients because when you're downtown chicago small properties in order to get to the revenue that you know uh, needs to sustain a client rep you've got to um, you got to take on a lot of properties so we have some reps that are managing you know, around 65 to 70 properties. And we have some that are like 15 that may be, you know, up on here on the North Shore, bigger estates, bigger properties. Uh, so it fluctuates greatly, but uh, on average, it's between uh, 35 and 40 account. That's per rep. Gotcha. Is the client rep the same as account manager for you? There's a question. Yes, the, it's the same. We actually don't even have the position account manager. Uh, I know that's more of an industry standard. We actually we call them client representatives. So it's one and the same. Got you. Uh, just want to go through the Q and A. Uh, what do you grade the properties on? Do you grade it based on the quality of the work that was done, or based on the quality of the property? You may rank the quality of the turf a three because the client doesn't have a lawn fertilizer program, or do you have two site audits, the site rep program? Oh, audits it's the a, site. Okay, go. it's a good question, um, and it's something that we did struggle with, and we continue. I mean, it's always a challenge to, again, get your graders to grade consistently. But we try to grade on what the crew leader can control. And so if they don't have a turf program with us, you know, we can't knock the crew leader if there are weeds in the in the turf. What I do expect is that a raccoon or somebody, a truck ran through the, you know, the yard and rutted it all up, that the, the crew leader would report that back to the client rep. I do expect that. Um, and that could be a ding on their score if they fail to do that. Uh, but we're really trying to grade on what the crew leader can control and not the site the site um, appearance, so to speak. If a client needs a ton of enhancement work, um, that's not the crew leader's responsibility. Uh, that's up to the client rep and the client to, to work out. So we really try to stick to just what that crew leader can control when we're grading. Uh, there's a question on, are these assessments in coordination with SOPs? Uh, I wonder what that means. Andrea. Um, if you can rephrase that, that would be super helpful. Do you understand what that was about? A standard operating procedure, does this sort, yeah. sort of coincide with this? Yeah. I mean, we have like a top 10 list of what our expectations for our client reps are. This obviously is included in that. Um, so anybody who gets hired on or comes on board, they, they know this is part of the, the deal that's required. Now, we the minimum grading is once a month. They can grade sites as many times as they want. Uh, and oftentimes on a lot of our properties, going there once a month is insufficient. Um, and so it's a minimum, um, but a lot of our properties dictate uh, more frequent touches. Let's put it that way. In round numbers, what contract revenue dollar is an average client rep responsible for? Kind of 1.2, 1.3 million, uh, which includes base maintenance, subcontracted work, and enhancement sales. What you can share the metrics are for the CPR. Yeah, so Sean, you will look at the CPR in a minute uh, when Tyler uh, does a demo of this. You mentioned, a, oh, we'll get into the discussion on Black Book in a minute, a lot of questions there. How do you feel your overall company image in the industry plays a factor in client retention? Oh, wow, <laughs> that's a good question. Uh, Nate, did you get that? I started laughing early. How do you feel your overall company image in the industry plays a factor in client retention? I don't think it plays anything into it. Uh, clients don't care about Mariani's reputation in the industry. Um, they care about what their property looks like and the experience that they receive. And so, you know, I know there's a lot of stuff in, uh, you know, Mariani Premier Group and what they're doing and, and the growth trajectory of, of Mariani. We try to limit that exposure to our clients because they simply don't care. They want to know that their crew leader and that their client rep are taking care of their property like it was their own. And if we do that, then everything is good. And he's asking, do you use site recon for tracking the quality control? It's like, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah, so yes. Which uh, we'll get into some samples. Uh, that'll be um, enlightening, I think. Yeah. Uh, Justin is asking, how do you differentiate from resident to commercial, which is vastly different from cruise sales process to sales cycle and customer engagement? In commercial, we deal with management companies, CAMS, and once awarded the contract, we work with the boards. I would say that, you know, we're not very good at, at really bidding and performing commercial work. The commercial work that we do would be 
a, a client that's looking for a residential sort of quality and experience. I can tell you, again, being a rep back in the day down in the city, um, I had a mixed bag of commercial and single family residential. Basically, anything that's not single family residential is considered commercial in our world. It was a lot of high-end HOAs, you know, super luxury uh, condo buildings and things like that, where people put a premium on, on aesthetics and they were willing to pay for sort of that, that additional experience. So I, I, we're not really great at on the commercial end of things. We dabble, uh, but we're really a high-end luxury residential geared type of operation. Got you. So there's a question from Drew and he's asking, how are you grading properties with a low expectation or low scope? If they ask for minimal turf care, would you grade it as it is or as it's expected? Well, again, that's where the client rep needs to know the situation. If it's a lower tiered sort of program, uh, we shouldn't grade it like it was receiving the, the top possible uh, service that we can provide because that's not what the client is paying for and that's not what the expectation is. We want to grade on what the expectation is based on the program that the client is paying for. Very cool. All right, guys. So that was that was the slide on KPIs. That was the discussion on KPIs. Thanks, Nick, for being patient and taking all the questions. So group performance rank, ranking, that's what you name your quality assessment process. Is there? Um, and then, you know, there's a question as well in the Q&A on this. How do you keep the quality consistent to your properties with crews, like different crews have different experience, different crews are working on different types of properties, different contracts. Like how, how are you getting to that standard? I mean, the whole thing must take a lot of overhead on training, I would assume. Yeah, I mean, kind of going back to the commercial thing, if we've got, uh, we do have commercially geared crews, bigger trailers, bigger equipment, uh, larger size crew that are gonna go out and, and take care of some of the bigger properties that we maintain. Uh, just because that's what the site dictates and that's what the contract dictates. But, you know, all of our crew leaders get stack ranked. They There's a mo most experience to least experience. And those those crew leaders that are on the bottom end of that spectrum are the ones we have to spend more time with. Um, I mean, we have an excellent retention rate on crew leaders. And so year after year, we get a very consistent uh, return on those those guys and gals to come in and, and run those. And we try to keep, you know, our clients get attached to their crew leaders too. So we have to take that in consideration, uh, which makes sometimes our routing very challenging because they're set on their day of the week and they're set on their crew and they're set on their client rep. And so we try to keep all that as close together as possible. But um, it's, uh, you know, it's a lot of corralling initially to try to get to that point, but understanding where your weak points are and and focusing on them is is sort of the whole sort of undertone of this whole process is just to identify where we've got some weak points and shine a light on it. And these dashboards are very handy here, guys. Like, so imagine having this visibility across your account managers, the properties they have visited, the ratings they are giving you. And you were able to apply filters based on weeks, months, if the uh, if the rating was done on site, off site, and so all of this is these are insights streaming over to Nate and other branch managers and other leaders in the company. And so you can drill down and look at that at a property level. You can drill down further and see what the turf is doing at that property, how's house pruning, how's how's housekeeping, overall appearance. All of these little data points are coming month after month, property after property. Nate, like your guys are doing these CPRs every month, right? Correct. So, and it's like, you said it begins in May and goes all the way to October. They're actually, uh, we we actually have them out now. Again, it's sort of like a, a CRM. We wanna go and look at properties in the winter um, and look for opportunities. And again, touch, it's just a touch point uh, for our clients that say, hey, we stopped by and we looked at the property. So we're actually using this tool right now just to ensure that our reps are out just driving by, just kind of doing a quick pass through uh, and touching base with our clients even before the season starts. We're just not using this, obviously, to grade through leaders because we're not really doing any, any work, but we're using it just as a checkoff point that said, yes, the client rep went and looked at this property in uh, this month. Yeah, and really start grading cool in question. May. And some really cool questions that you guys ask. I love it. You ask, have you communicated with this client in the last 30 days? That's a great question to keep in there. I mean, and you're like doing this every month. 
And so that makes everybody accountable for like making sure that if they are on the side, they're calling the client or texting them at least. Well, we also do a lot of surveying of our clients too. We try to do two NPS surveys a year. And so again, using data from this, if I've got a client that comes back and says, well, I don't even know who my client rep is, but then my client rep says, well, I've talked to them in the last 30 days. Then I have to ask the question, well, what's going on here? Um, so it allows me to just kind of slice all the different data that's coming in from various perspectives and, and directions to make my own assessment on how we're performing. Very cool. Back to the slideshow, flag alerts, great feature, man, you guys really, I mean, we love building this out for you. Like rating goes below three, you get a get an alert notification. Are there other types of escalations that you've thought about? Again, when we're looking at this so closely, I obviously, you know, like to really uh, acknowledge people for going above and beyond. And most of our scores are at a very high level. Uh, but as sort of naturally, we dwell on the low scores. And so we're really looking at those very closely. And uh, there's there's a requirement that somebody from a manager level needs to go out. If there's a score that you know is coming in less than three, somebody else needs to go out and look at it. And we've got to determine um, what needs to happen in order to get it above a three and make sure that we communicate that plan proactively to the client so that they're not wondering, why does my place look like crap? You know, we don't want that. If it does not look like the way that we want, we want to say it immediately and say, here's our plan to correct it. That is such a powerful statement for a client experience. I mean, put yourself in the shoes as a consumer yourself. If somebody says, I know we screwed this up, but this is what we're going to do to fix it before you even have to complain about it. Man, that's like, that's what you want. Good. All right. Anybody watch UFC? This is Bruce Buffer. And it's time for that demo. Um, Tyler, are you there? I am. I am. Hey, man. Hey, guys. How are you? I'm doing good, my friend. It's uh, I'm in Indianapolis area. It's it's awful windy here today, and I just hope you guys can hear me okay. But uh, I'm on a site right now. Uh, some of you guys might recognize the site. I've been here before. But we're gonna do a site assessment. Just basically what Nate just had. Same same thing he's doing. I'm on an actual site. Show you kind of the process. How easily we can do it from our Plato app the screen, and we'll get going. All right, guys. Can everyone see my screen? Okay. Yeah. All right. So as you can see here, I'm on this property. It's a commercial warehouse building. Um, our sales team already did take off score, so that's why you can see the highlighted areas that are green and also the ones that are blue. Go ahead and start a site assessment here. So we're going to start that off by the bottom right here. The plus sign is, and we're like plus. Here's a template. So this is where you guys can have customizable templates. It has at Mariani. You can create your own template for your own tracking purposes. And we're going to say not done here. We're going to put. I Smith 21, All right, so I'm on the site right now. I'm walking around. I'm looking at turf quality, like what you guys, you know, talked about earlier. You know, what's the condition of this site? Um, we're going to say turf quality. It's a three, right? It's dormant here. Um, it's probably as best as what it could be right this time of year. Nothing we can do to really improve it right now, but we will, you know, come here for the next two months, right? Bed detail. How's the beds looking? So fresh mulch. Um, we just got uh, mulch put down. No, no weeds in the beds. We're, we're okay with that. Okay. Now, pruning. So now if we're looking at pruning items, we're looking at, you know, zero, do they need prunes? Four, I'm sorry, four, are they, they don't need prunes. Zero, they need prunes. We're going to say they're in bad shape. So we're going to make two. We're going to make a note here. Needs pruned. For some, some reason, they didn't get pruned, but they need to get put here for that. Seasonal flower care. So this particular site, guys, does not have any winter decor. Um, so we're going to go ahead and say just, you know, give it a zero, and it's just not available for this particular item. All right, housekeeping items. Is the, is the facility clean? Um, any debris hanging around? Uh, actually, it looks really, really good here. We're going to give it a four here. Overall overall appearance. Now, how does it look overall? Do we need to make any you know overall changes, enhancement upsells? What do we need to do for the property? You know, being February here in the Indianapolis area, it looks probably as best as it can be for this type of time of year. So we're going to give it a four as well. So here's where those fine things come in that uh, Nate was talking about. You know, how do you communicate it to your Client in the last 30 days. No, we're going to say we haven't done it. As far as you know, is the client currently satisfied with our service? We don't know that either because we haven't talked to the client. So we're going to say no as well. And now here we can upload pictures of those things that are, you know, the negative review or not, not a four star rating. So we're going to click a plus icon here. I'm going to take a picture. So I'm on site right here. You can see here they don't look the best of the shrubs, but we have it here. And just take some overall pictures of the site. Make sure that the edges are clean. And here we go. So I'm going to hit done now, and you're going to see all those pictures are uploaded to this uh, site inspection report. I'm going to hit next, 
I'm just going to pick the spot where I want to drop that and create it. But now you guys are going to be able to easily see, go onto this property. You can see where that pin, I dropped the pin is. You can see that site, assess, site assessment report right there, at the bottom of your screen, where we can easily take this and we can export this to a report or we can send it directly to a customer if we want to do that as well. Uh, if the customer wants to see that, you can do all that right, right from the screen. Okay, so we'll go back into this report here. And we'll choose estimation view. That's the view we're on. And we'll create that report that we had that from site assessment right there. And we're going to export that. We're going to put site assessment to 21. And now this is our, our system is taking that, that report and information we had and creating a, a PDF file where you can easily send that off to your customer. And also on your internal team, if you guys need to make adjustments with quality issues, production side of things, you're able to do all that right there from the site assessment uh, tool right here. Any questions, anybody? What do you think about the way Tyler was rating the property? Is that kind of what you expect to go through the minds of your account managers as they're moving through the property? Uh, yeah, absolutely. You, you kind of want to walk the property entirely first. Uh, and then once you kind of get around the property, make make those uh, determinations on the overall site quality for those specific categories and then, and then fired it off. And then we look at that data and then go from there. So... Uh, but yeah, pretty pretty much spot on. Again, the training right. on what is what is a three versus a four is becomes the challenging part, uh, and it's a uh, it's going to be a constant challenge. Uh, but that's why we try to spend a lot of time, you know, training and developing our teams, and and so we understand what that is. Very cool. Thank you, Tyler. Let me share my screen and I'll show how this looks up on the dashboard centrally in a second. All right. You all can see my screen. Sweet. So the this is the property Tyler was on, and uh, you can see how all the ratings sort of compile here. God, I'm trying to zoom in. All the ratings sort of compile here, and you you can check this off. You can just like look at all the properties that have been done, and like this one over here, and you see this little pin that shows that this rating was done on property. Now it says 36 minutes ago because the system updates every 15 minutes. Uh, to capture all the ratings from all the guys in the field and Tyler was just out there that's why it says 36 minutes so he was out there did the rating just so that we can look at the results on the dashboard but yeah he did it on site the data is here and that's how you build visibility now he mentioned that you can export these reports this is what that export would look like you got this this overall view of the property when we were on site you got an got a hint that this report was created on site and all the quality ratings there's a question that was asked Nate in the Q&A and you know, do you share these reports or these ratings with the client, or these are only for internal use case? We have not yet, um, but that is the next progression that we want to get to is continuing to develop the client view of this assessment. Uh, and then we also want to call out enhancement opportunities as well. Uh, we have you know, a lot of our clients are traveling um, at all times of the year. And so this is a great way to communicate them when they're not even in town and uh, just to continue to develop that rapport with them that they know we're looking out for their property and have and really have their best interest at mind. So um, that's the next progression that we definitely want to use this tool for. Very cool. I want to ask you, what would you like to say? To the guys after listening to all this i'm sure a bunch of them would be on the fence and they would be like oh you know what we'll try this in a few years um, what what would you say to them like why would you consider this a priority to implement like last year around this time we just started talking and then in a couple of months you had rolled it out to like 60 people in your team why was it such a priority for you why should this be a priority uh, for others well i think it uh, even if you're a smaller company and you're trying to establish that culture of quality uh to have the parameters and and begin to use ways to sort of enforce that i think would be something you'd want to start as soon as possible and if you're a larger company and you're having a hard time figuring out how to sort of corral uh everything and and understand it from a manager level this could be a a, a really nice tool to be able to help you do that that's obviously why we're using it is is uh, all the things we talked about today it really kind of ties it all together and allows us to to see things that we couldn't get to in in person so to speak i felt like there's there's a point here that a lot of guys in the industry also struggle with which is the retention rate now you have like really cool retention rate uh it's it's over 90 percent, right That's right and we pulled together this stat where if you have two businesses right and they have the same amount of sales happening they start from the same point one million dollars both of them and both of the businesses are adding $150,000 in new sales every year, right? 15% on that base. 
but one business has 90% attention and the other one has 95% attention. In seven years, the business with 95% attention rate will double and the business with 90% attention rate will only grow 40%. And that difference is like huge. Like, so I feel if, if you have a growth mindset and you are in the maintenance business with recurrent contracts, like absolutely essential that you have very high retention rates. And it's impossible to do that without great quality. Yeah, we have a saying here, get a client, keep a client. You know, you work too hard to get that account. Uh, you can't let it go and and risk losing all those enhancement opportunities that will come with that property year over year. The other thing is there is just your reputation. Uh, you know, the reputation in the community is that Mariani does a, a really high level quality work. Uh, we have to protect that reputation. At the end of the day, the client's only going to stay with you if you hold uphold that reputation, um, which is a, is sort of the, the, the whole emphasis behind this. But uh, so, yeah, there was a point that came up in a discussion with one of our customers that and let me know if you agree with that, like you're just getting into spring and the nature will start getting the better of the resources you have. Like if the sun comes out and the plants start growing faster. Does, do you think the CPRs can actually help you direct resources on properties as well? Like the ones that are sort of struggling, you could focus the crew to go out there first and so on. hundred percent. Again, we look at the, the sites and the scores that are coming in in the first month. And, you know, we've got 20 sites with really poor scores. You know, we're going to send resource out there to figure out how to improve that assessment. Or we'll go out there and say, okay, the, maybe the client rep did not grade this site properly. And that was, again, going back to grading what a crew leader can control. I mean, a, a lot of first time users of our CPR program, you know, that's something that'll pop up. Somebody gave a score, you know, a one, and it's because, you know, all the U's or whatever are dead. Well, that's not the crew leader's responsibility. It is a responsibility to report that. Uh, but that's an enhancement opportunity that they shouldn't be graded on. And so just looking at low scores and diving into whatever reason is causing that could be the actual performance of the crew, could be the grading was just not done properly. Either way, it's a way to educate on how to do this process and um, continually to build people up till we get them to where we want them to be. And you're looking at these scores it's a KPI for the crew, not a KPI for the account manager. The performance of the account manager is being rated on the enhancement sales, on retention, and so on, right? Like, but not on the quality of scores. The quality of scores is essentially giving you a rating on the crew performance. Yeah, but going back to like the surveys that we get, or if a client calls in and complains, uh, if we have a complaint or a low survey from a client, the first thing that I do is I go check and see what the scores that the client rep have been giving that property. And if that client mm. says, you know, this has just been a terrible year or whatever, and the, the client rep gave it fours every month, all year long, that's a problem that there's a disconnect between what the expectation of the client was and what the client rep was grading. And so while I'm using it to, uh, while we're using it to uh, reward and, and track performance of the crew, I'm also using it as a reverse effect to see how that client rep is really grading the site. Unfortunately, in that case, a problem has already happened in the eye of the, the client, but at least it gives me an insight to what was going down previously in the year. I see. And what was the point of getting production managers on board as well? Well, the production managers, obviously, they're the ones that are, are really tasked with upholding the quality of the work that's performed. They want to know when a crew leader is is not up to the task. And that grade, again, comes from the sales side, sort of linking, bridging the two back together to say, I think it really gives the vo a voice to the client rep to say, I am going to grade this site because I have to have it looking good in order to continue to sell enhancement work. And so it's my chance as a client rep to voice my concern or praise a crew leader for doing what we need to do in order to get to the next step. Got you. All right. And we do see um, a lot of praise. You can leave notes uh, on here that the production team can see that says, you know, crew leader, you're doing an excellent job. The client loves what's going on. We obviously want to celebrate that as well. Very nice. Do you like bring that up in like, like a weekly meeting or a monthly meeting you have with the team? Yeah. Shout outs. 
we have a whole program for giving shout outs internally and uh, we try to celebrate when people do a really good job. Guys, so we're at the end of this. We will take up questions in a minute that are there in the chat. If you want your process to be set up, like Nate has set it up for his team, get in touch with us. Justin, Tyler and our team will help you get, get that set up. You can scan this QR code. Aman, if you can drop a link in the chat to book for people you know, who find scanning hard, please do that. Book some time with us. We'll figure out what we can do for you. And uh, in any case, it's like a no commitment, no cost interaction. At best, we'll just exchange notes. I see at the poll results here, a lot of you are doing great. Like 13 of you have retention rate over 90%, 90% to 95%. And five of you have that over 95%, I guess. In the next webinar we have, we'll get the five of you in here and talk about oh, how the hell did you get it over 95%. I think the like as you move from 90 to 95 and 95 above, like it's, there's a saying in tech that it gets twice as hard to reduce that error by like half. So you go from you know 10% churn to 5% churn, 5% to 2.5%. It's it's incredibly hard. So good stuff, guys. The link to book is in the chat. Uh, the QR code is here. Nate, let's take up a few questions that have landed here. Do you demand that your crew leaders be bilingual? No, we don't demand it, um, but it is helpful if they can communicate. You know, clients come out in their yard if and and oftentimes they like to talk to the crew leader that's on their property. Um, if they can communicate even a little bit, it's always beneficial, but it's not required. Most of them do. Most of most of our crew leaders are, I'd say probably 90, 95 percent. Got you. There's a question here. Do you share contracts with the crew leaders for informational purposes? How is the technical information shared? Uh, well, we uh, we don't necessarily share the contracts, but we share what the expectation is and what they, they obviously know the level of service that was uh, sold or hopefully they do. Um, and all those things are communicated through the production coordinators and in what we call sort of squad meetings. There are small pods of client reps and production coordinators that meet on a weekly basis, talk about site quality, site issues, and then those things get translated back to the crew leader. I also very, always encourage our client reps to meet crew leaders on site, walk the property with them, and point out those things. It's obviously probably the most powerful way to portray what the expectation is. 100%. How does this software fit into your overall tech stack? or other programs you are using? Is this only for operations use? Uh, it's pretty much only for operations use right now. Again, we talked about being able to share this um, hopefully this year with uh, our clients. Anytime we grade the property or uh, have enhancement opportunities that might pop up that we want to portray, if, especially if the client's out of, out of town. I'm old school. I always like to try to sell it by getting the client and walking the property with them. So I don't want to rely on this. 100% for selling enhancements. That's not what we're looking for, but it certainly helps communicate to clients that are out of town. But uh, I guess that's in a nutshell. Hey, Utkarsh, uh, sorry yeah. to interject here. Yeah, um, I think I don't have the permission to drop. For some reason, I cannot drop the link to everyone. It only goes to hosts and panelists from me. So can you... Okay. I just did uh, that. I just okay, did thanks. that. Uh, cool, guys, cool, cool, the booking link is in the chat. I think you all should have access to it now. So there's a question. Does your 1.3 million a client trip handles include snow as well? Uh, no, it does not include snow. How many properties does Mariani service and how many crews do you have? Uh, like I say, we're a little uh, roughly 1,800 uh, properties that we service on a weekly basis. Um, we have some periodic type of accounts and some enhancement only accounts and things like that too. So, so you know, quite, quite a few. And then what was the second part of that question? How many crews? Uh, well, we, we've we got uh, quite a few. I mean, we've got maintenance crews. We have enhancement crews. We have turf techs and uh, rose care crews and garden specialist crews. Uh, but all in, we're running somewhere around 120 um, when we're at full steam on throughout the maintenance department. Gotcha. Some software related questions. How can we initially implement this software as a company on the smaller side with two crews? At the moment, moment, we don't have account managers, but we'll implement this as we scale. How should our team leads initially focus on taking these assessments? Also, like getting the crews to do the assessments. Nate, any thought on that? Interesting thought. I have them grade themselves. Uh, could be powerful. I'd like to know if you implement it, how, how it works out. I think anytime you can get, I, obviously, for my like territory VPs, I ask that they provide a, a weekly report on their performance and how their their worlds are doing. So maybe it's an interesting concept 
to have the crew grade their own. That's actually really interesting, actually. I'd like to know if you use it. Very cool. Uh, do you have a minimum contract size to a point where you would turn a potential customer away if it was a certain size of revenue amount? Not really. Uh, we're kind of go after anything that we can get. If we can, you know, make a turn a profit on it, uh, I'm willing to do it. Especially like if you're down in the city, like uh, wh when I was upcoming in Mariani, you know, I I'd sell thousand dollars worth of mulch only if I could do it and, and make some money doing it. So uh, we don't really have a minimum. We just want to bid things accurately and uh, and set our production team up for success with enough labor and materials to do Mariani quality work. Very cool. There's one question here. Do you, related to what was asked before, do you all move these over to Aspire or whatever your company CRM is, or just keep them in Site Recon? Uh, right now, just keeping it within Site Recon. Um, there might be a way in, in the future. Uh, we're, again, co continuous improvement. I'm already thinking of a lot of ways to make Site Recon work better for us and and ways for you guys to develop your program. Obviously, site assessments was the start of that. Uh, we want to take that to the next step. And I'm excited to see what the future holds in terms of using tech to make our lives um, more efficient and a little easier. Very cool. You know, we backed into site recon. You guys have a site, you know, measuring. That's your main thing. We didn't use that first. We You helped us build the site assessment tool. And now we're using all your takeoff measurements as well. So it's um, full circle. Yeah, hundred percent. Like you, you were like very unique that way for us too. Like no one, people would start with the takeoff and then go to the site assessment. You completely changed that completely. I think it's a it's a trend we might end up seeing in more high end residential companies like yours, especially because you're you're out there on site so much and quality as a thing is so important for you. Like as the first thing to solve, you might just think, hey, let's solve quality first and then we'll get to you know ordering takeoffs from these guys. Yeah. Yep. We still have a few more questions here. Nate, I know it's a hard stop for you. I don't want to keep you anymore. I can, um, uh, let's do it. two more questions. I got time for two okay. more. All right. All right, cool. Can you take pictures while you are walking the property, then fill out the assessment at the end of the walk? Yes, you can do that. We can show you how. Just book that link here, Tommy. What is the percentage of profit that Mariani shoots for to get per maintenance contract? What about enhancements? Uh, what was the first part of that question? Um, what is the percentage of profit that Mariani shoots for? Uh, oh, to get percentage per maintenance of maintenance contract? to enhancements. Yeah. You know, we're trying to do uh, about one... 30% more on enhancements than maintenance. So one and 1 1.3 to one, basically. And we've gotten better year over year. I mean, again, when I was a rep, I was really into selling enhancements. I didn't really care that much about maintenance as long as it was good and allowed me to sell enhancements. I was more into that. And when I took over the department in 2019, I think I brought that mentality. And ever since then, we've increased the amount of enhancements that we sell every year uh, as a percentage to our maintenance. So something that we want to continue that trend. Very cool. One last question, Nate. Um, I think this was like really, really cool. Uh, you mentioned a set of documented standards or black book. Can you explain more about what that is and how it got developed? Again, the black book was developed long before I got here. I mean, there was a standard of quality uh, going back 60 of that has been developed and tweaked and updated, um, but it, it just really kind of talks about how to estimate how we want to estimate maintenance, what it goes into that. And uh, through that, we're able to boil down to just, uh, uh, you know, some standards on turf and pruning and bed care and all that housekeeping stuff on what the expectation is. So um, every market probably is different. Every you know, client, uh, you know, the type of clientele that you're working with might have a different level of expectations. I think every company has to decide for themselves, you know, what are they trying to provide? And what is their niche? Do you have a person in your company that is like sort of responsible for maintaining this black book or like everybody contributes to it? Like, is there a quality position that does that? Uh, yeah, we were ISO 9000 certified for a long time, which is a quality standards uh, sort of mechanism. I think uh, we're sort of getting away from that, but we still want to maintain um, those records and that standard of quality. And it will be updated as needed as we move into the future. Got you. All right. Um, Nate, man, this has been amazing. Uh, really appreciate the time you took with us explaining everything. Any parting words that you would uh, want to share with the guys here? I guess just um, good luck to everybody this, this season. Spring's coming early. Um, always try to find ways to improve your business. As long as you have that mentality, uh, you'll be successful as far as I'm concerned. So uh, good luck to everybody and 
if you have any other success stories on how to use the program, I'm always trying to learn myself and take things away. So if you find a different way or a better way to do it, uh, I'm all ears. Please let me know. Thank you, Nate. This was amazing. We're going to hang around for a bit. Feel free to drop, man. Um, right. Answer any more questions that come through. Um, yeah, feel free to send my email out. People can catch me on LinkedIn yep. or whatever if you want to ask me a question. I'm I'm pretty much an open book. So, all right, we'll see you. Thank you. Thank you, Nate. Okay, see ya. All right, that's Nate's email, guys. Landscape.com. And you can find Nate Birch on LinkedIn. Um, you can send him messages. Yeah, he's he is an open book. Let's see. Uh, Sean, you had a question at the end. Are you saying you want to sell $1.3 of announcement for every $1? So when this recording goes out, do you guys do just check in with, uh, you know, what he was saying, or you can send him an email, Sean, and continue this line of, line of discussion. Mike has a question. What do you consider maintenance and what do you consider enhancements is mulch maintenance? Good question. Good question. Jen, I would, I mean, I wouldn't like to speak for Nate. Uh, so please go ahead um, and reach out to him. He would be happy to answer. Uh, there's a question that someone asked about implementing it with a smaller set of uh, guys in the company, like just two crews and didn't get a chance to comment on that before. Uh, so the way you could do that is you could still have folks outside the crew running this um, assessment because like Nate said, it would be interesting if I rate myself, right? So if 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 there's there's someone who's selling, or someone else in the admin team who's sort of going out, speaking to clients, just folks who are not crew, they could be going out and rating the properties just so there's a third party doing the rating, um, third party from the standpoint of a crew. Now, of course, the crews could rate themselves. Um, and at that point, you would need to have a different cultural standard on how you enforce or how you take action on bad ratings and how you appreciate uh, the good work that's being done because people are rating themselves. So that's the kind of challenge that creeps in uh, when people are rating themselves. Uh, I see Clayton has raised his hand. I on, Clayton, I'll, the hand's not there anymore. I was about to unmute you, Clayton. All right, sweet. I hope this was useful, guys. Thank you so much for joining in and uh, look forward to hearing from you soon and bringing more education for you. Please be on the lookout for our communication, especially after, after webinar, we follow up with the recordings and any other resources you would like from us, like this presentation, et cetera, feel free to reach out and send our messages to, to either Tyler or Justin. We are there on LinkedIn. You have this QR code and link with you. Thank you so much, guys. Really appreciate you all. Good luck. Mm -hmm.